Hey there, everybody. I'm Anna. I'm a mom of three living in small town, West Virginia. And this is my art channel. I just finished wrapping up a massive series of 31 paintings to kick off the new year. So I wanted to do this series to really showcase the variety of techniques that you can use in acrylic pouring. Um, <laughs> and I think I succeeded. I had three color schemes. So I did 10 or 11 paintings of each color palette. And I think I had 29 or 30 different techniques. Some of them were in the same family, but I put the colors out a little different or I manipulated them in a different way. Anyway, lots of variety, lots of amazing effects. And I hope it inspired you to try new fun things in your acrylic pouring. So let's go check them all out. But first, if you'd like to see the creation videos for any of them, you can click this link up here and, uh, and it'll take you to a playlist and you can see, you can pick and choose from any of the paintings that might catch your eye, but let's go check them all out. Guys, I'm finished. This is 31 paintings. 31 8 by 8 inch paintings. Tons of different designs from swipes to blooms to strainers to flip cups. Some that use silicone, some that don't use silicone. All kinds of different tools. Um, I have had a blast filming this series and I just wanted to show you all of them lined up together. So over on this side are my favorites. And then they slowly, it was so hard to pick favorites, guys. But, um, but eventually they make their way down this way to the middle ones and then down towards my lesser favorites. There wasn't a painting in here that I did that I didn't like. There were a couple that I was like, okay, demonstrates a technique, but I'm not in love with that particular piece. But then there were some other ones where the result was just like, wow. For example, that one, I love it. And that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. And that one, and that one. And I'm gonna stop because I'm basically just showing you all my favorites. Anyway, it is a massive, massive, massive project. And I will be honest, I didn't paint all of these in the month of January because I had to start um, back in December so that there would be time to have them all dried and then varnished by the end of this month. Anyway, I'm gonna go through them one by one with you and show you some close-ups and talk about some of the details. So let's go to that. Okay, here we go. Starting with the tropical colored 10. So these, this is the chameleon cell painting. This was one of the really popular ones and one of my personal favorites. It's just so vibrant, especially when varnished glossy. Great, great details on those multicolored cells. So this was definitely a favorite. Then probably my second favorite was this one, this mixed media Dutch pour, a flower with a dragonfly. So it ended up really with a really neat flower, but then also this dragonfly where I painted on the body, but you can still see the texture of the wings. I don't know if you can tell. I spray varnished it instead of brush varnished it and you can see the wing texture, which is one of my favorite things about using real wings instead of just painting it on. Next, I love this uh, funnel pour. I think probably just because it's one of the newer techniques for me. I loved all of the details that I was able to get there in the center, as well as those beautiful, delicate feathered edges. And then it's got this nice shimmer of gold in the center, which is just lovely. 
Okay, so my next one is this field of wildflowers that I made with dish soap and water to create those really unique bloom shapes. And then all these purple and white cells just popped up on their own, I think due to paint density. And then I added all of those stems to make it look like this really abstract field of wildflowers, and I love it. Next up is my chain pole bouquet which uh, turned out really neat. It's very delicate because I had a lot of base coat paint on there. So the leaves and the blossoms pulled down very small, but I really like those almost hibiscus looking flowers down there in the front and those nice wispy flowers up top. This was my uh, ring pour that I wrecked and then spun out so this one's just fun and crazy. I love all those cells that came up without silicone. And then look at those layers. Very, very cool. So this was just a regular tree ring pour that I swiped through and then spun it out. It made this nice wacky effect. Next up is my micro swipe which ended up being, you know, pretty dark and purple, but it's got some really cool details in there. I love how the micro swipe effect um, creates the beautiful bubbled colored layers coming across the white. Up next is my flip cup that I did with glue as the pouring medium. Um, so this one turned out really cool too. It got a little out of control with air bubbles, but pretty, uh, pretty designs, and I really like it. Then this one's pretty wild. This was a um, the bloom swipe with the apple barrel pouring medium. And so this one, I accidentally stretched one side completely off the canvas, whoops, but was able to save it with these swirls. So it looks very much like some tropical party that's what I think of when I see it. So that is very cool as well. And then the last of these is the straw blown flower, which my daughter absolutely loves. It isn't my personal favorite, but it's a good representation of what you can do with this technique. All right, let me show you the next set, which is the blues. Okay, so starting off the blues is this one which I think looks like an angel wing and stained glass. This was my traveling straight pour or wandering straight pour. Love it, love it. Turned out so cool. Um, this one is varnished satin instead of glossy because it has already been sold and the buyer requested a satin finish. So I love this one. This one just, this one turned out special. Next up is my ribbon pour which got a really cool look from the cell interaction that made all of these white, white bubbles. But it's very metallic, very, very cool. Um, I think it looks like octopus tentacles. And I love the sea, so this one was right up my alley. Speaking of water and the sea, this was my bloom swipe with a palette knife. And, uh, just, oh my goodness, this one's amazing. I think it looks like a waterfall rushing down and then flowing out to the river. But I love all of those gorgeous, gorgeous cells, especially the ones around the edges, but then also the, the waterfall area as well. So, so amazing. And then this was my open cup, which ended up looking like a spiral galaxy in the universe. Super cool, especially when varnished. So the colors really pop. So that's just, this one was nice. I, it was a fun surprise to have all of that show up so nicely. And you see that metallic sheen? That was the metallic sea mist that I used. Really makes a nice effect, especially when it's varnished. This was my palette knife swipe using silicone, so I made waves. I love the purple in it. 
and I just love those bubbles that you get when you're swiping with silicone. They're so clean, yet kind of chaotic. Just really, really pretty. And then all the metallics, you can see the blue shining there, and the metallic purple. So this was a favorite for me. And then here's my Dutch pour that I did with Floetrol, which when I painted it, I showed it to you like this, which is very cool too, but I turned it and I realized this makes it look like the state of West Virginia, which is my home state. So I think this is how I'm going to have it displayed, but I love the shimmer that you can see in there and all those cells that came up just from the paint and the flow troll interacting. So this one was great. Next up was my silicone swipe. This one was crazy. The, the lacing was amazing. I used too much purple in the middle, which is why there's that wide band. It's, it turned out great. I wanted more of these blue cells, but it's still a fantastic effect and I absolutely love how the white is looking through the center. But just, yeah, amazing details. And that metallic purple is really pretty as it laces its way through. This was my dirty pour with silicone. So this one is just fun, kind of chaotic water going everywhere, but it's got nice metallic colors. So especially with the varnish on, it's, it's very, very cool to look at. And then here was my tree ring pour with the apple barrel pouring medium. And as you can see, it went a little off center, but it still, it had some great, great detailed layers and very nice colors. And boy, it, it varnished up nice and smooth and glossy. Because apple barrel pouring medium makes a thicker surface than Floetrol, when you varnish, it's gonna look smoother. Maybe not quite a resin look, but closer. And then here was my puddle pour, which I love this just crazy abstract look. I wanna play around more with puddle pours. But we've got some nice, nice layered uh, details and metallic paint and everything. So very cool. And then finally here was my paint and water Dutch pour, which turned out very pretty and provided a nice contrast and comparison piece to my regular Floetrol um, based Dutch pours. Uh, this one, I didn't wait long enough for the paint to cure, and then I tried to cover up that varnish mistake by varnishing more and more, and then I varnished too heavy, so it got some cracking in the varnish. You can see some textural issues there. So because this one used the higher quality paint, it needed longer to cure, and I just wasn't patient enough, so too bad. But I think it looks kind of like, you know, frozen like a frozen pond or something with the crackly ice on top. So I don't mind that too much, but I'll probably keep this one for myself. All right, that's all of the blues. Let me show you the earth tones. Okay, here's the earth tones set, starting with this split base Dutch pour. I love how the metallic colors shine in this one, the copper and the gold, especially on that dark green base. It's just amazing. So I love this one. This was actually the last one that I painted in the series, even though it shows up about two thirds of the way through, this was the last piece that I ended up making. And I was so nervous when I painted it that it wasn't gonna go well, but it turned out amazing. Next up is this um, bloom pour, this bloom where I blew it out and then spun it, but with just Amsterdam paint and water as the cell activator. It still made some really beautiful lacing there in the middle. Delicate lacing across my paint. I was going for a turtle shell look and I think I succeeded. I think that looks fantastic. Here's another surprise favorite. This is a transfer swipe that I did and this was one of the last paintings that I did 
Um, and it was actually a, a new technique for me when I filmed it, as well as me using a new recipe, which is just, that, that's how I do things. I'm like, oh look, a new technique. Let me change the recipe and do a tutorial all at once. But it paid off. We have these beautiful ribbon shapes, and I definitely want to practice this technique more. But this one was definitely a success and a personal favorite in, in the series. Then this was my straight pour, which was just straight in the middle, no traveling, no wandering. And look at the detailed layers there in the center and along the edges. Oh, it turned out so amazing. You think straight pour, okay, that's really boring. That's bland, you're just pouring the paint in one spot. Yeah, well, the paint makes some beautiful effects just on its own, so this, this was very cool. Love this one a lot. Then here was my flip cup, the painting that started the series. I love the metallics in it, the copper and the gold. They really, really make it pop and shine. I love the detail that you get in a flip cup with silicone. It's really amazing cells. And I like how flip cups are so um, unexpected. You don't know what's going to pop, pop up. You don't know how it's going to turn out. Even though you know what colors you're putting in, you just never know how a flip cup is going to turn out. And that's one of the reasons that they're super fun. And this was my strainer pour using just the very simple sink strainer effect to create all these wonderful layers. And then I spun it out, which is why it's so uniform. And the center is swirled, um, so I love all the layers in there of the greens and the browns and the little pops of metallic copper in those layers as well. So this is, you know, this particular design is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but it's really fun to make and I really enjoyed this piece. Then this was my dust pan pour, which I actually used very small um, kitchen scoops for, like two inch scoops. Um, so I'm not sure what exactly this made. I don't know if this is rockets, I don't know if this is eggs, I don't know if this is aliens, but, but I am drawn to this particular style. I think it's very cool, and the metallics are amazing to see the gold and the copper shimmering. It just makes a very three-dimensional kind of effect. This was my silicone swipe with a profile shape added on the end. So most of these profile swipes, they have like a person's face and it's hair flowing out the end, but I knew on a small square canvas I didn't have space for a face, so I made an evergreen tree on the side. And I really like the way that looks. I love, I think it looks like snow falling on an evergreen tree. So all those white dots are like snow. We even have brown down there near the trunk. So I think this piece is really cool. And I like making these profile sw uh, swipes and I wanna do more of them. Then here we had the ghost swipe. So this is a very subtle painting style. Um, not everybody likes really big and bold designs hanging in their house. So the ghost swipe is a great way of doing, um, you know, color, especially on a dark base. That's just, it's very subtle. It's very, I mean, it's striking, but it's, um, you know, it's a different look than a lot of other acrylic pores because it's not so big and bold and bam, colors all over the place, but it's still very cool. And it's got some gold, metallic gold in there, which is a little hard to pick up. But I like this one too. And last but not least, even though it kind of is the least, uh, this was my flip cup without silicone. So this one was pretty cool in that it got all this lacing and then these cells just from torching and just from the paint interacting with the other colors. So it's got this nice big stripe of metallic gold um, so that is another cool effect that didn't require silicone. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite painting of those 31 that I just did? Were there any techniques that 
you hadn't heard of before watching this video, I'd love to know. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos from me, and I will see you for the next one. Bye.